what's up, YouTube? This your boy Obey who say what's up records, layer production. What we ready to do, we ready to get into another tutorial. And this tutorial, we're gonna get into macros and how you set them up and what was you using for. In my case, I use them to set up my whole project. When I get started in the project, whenever I'm ready to make a track, record a beat, pull a beat VST out, whatever. I can pull all my tracks out with micros, with the macros, and you know that they have plugins on them already. So the only one I don't have my plugins on is my B folder because I do a lot of different things when I'm making my beats. So it, it any given day, it could be something different I'm gonna wanna do. So I don't got no plugins on my beat, my beat tracks. So for my vocal folder, you will see they all have an EQ and a compressor on them. My oxes, they already set up. Reverbs, Relay Echo, Resnap, only thing not on my oxes, I don't have my send and returns yet, they not on there, but it's already, my effect chain that I normally gonna have is already there, it's already set up for me, so that's just with the click of a button. My subfolder. So what you would have to add after like my picture template, my uh, thumbnails I meant, you gotta add them after you do your macros. But you still also gotta do the routing. Like none of my tracks is routed. Early, early track is routed to the default output right now as you can see. So you still will have to go in and route your tracks where you want them to go. But this is still going to make it so much faster when you're building your project. Now we are going to it and I'll show you. So delete everything. And I'm going to show you what I mean. So I can just call my beat tracks. One button. My beat tracks come up. So get eight beat tracks to come up. Then I can call my vocal track. On my vocal track, on one press of a button, I'm gonna get three vocal tracks come up. That's how I normally record with my vocals. So I'm gonna have two main vocals in the ad lib track. And you'll see all of them came up with the EQ and compressor on them. Then I go for my vocal tracks. Nine times out of ten, I put three sets of vocal tracks. Is normally I'm gonna do at least two verses and a hook. So I'll hit that twice. So you'll notice, you'll see pop up right here the message window letting me know what I just now inserted into the edit. So I just edit, insert it vocal tracks so I got nine vocal tracks now so then I go insert my sub well not insert my oxes first insert my ox my ox folder and insert my oxes and see all my oxes came up they already set everyone Go set my sub. Sorry, hit the wrong button. Kick sub. Other percussion sub. Bass sub. Keys and sip sub. Vocal sub, ox sub, ox 
Fox fader, Lee fader, Kobe fader. So now I have all my tracks. Then I go make my folder. Project folder, all my everything gonna go inside of here, except for my master fader. So I make my project folder, beat folder. So I take all my beat tracks, drag them, put them in my beat folder. I say I don't put my master fader in my fader folder. It's the reason I do that, because when I put everything in my project folder, I want to be able to still mix when my whole project folder closed, so I still can see all my plugins right here. So when I'm finished with my mix and I'm on my master fader, everything out my way. I can just close it all down. That's why I do this method that I do. So, but now all y'all have to do is route your tracks. And what I normally do is get rid of the faders over here because I'm never going to use these anyway. So I always replace these with text plugins named after the folder. So I copy and paste the name and place the plugin. Text plug in, paste the name. It's faster to do it with your keyboard, but I w I'm just showing y'all. So. Them with the text plugin. So now I got the same thing on the left and the right. I know from my left and my right where I'm at. That too, that make my workflow easier because I don't got to look over to the right to see where I'm at. I know where I'm at on my left and my right. That's why I like using the text plugin too. And then you also can use the text plugin to leave notes in, in the text plugin for yourself for things you do in your mix. And that's going to make you, when you come back, after you ain't been in the mix for a while, you can come back and you have notes in there to let you know where you left off at. So now all you will do is just route your track. So say if I want, I know these going to be kicking snares, these four tracks. I select them all, and I route them. Go to my subfolder. I say that's kicking snare. So now all these tracks will be routed to my kicking snare. And then you will do the same thing with all the rest of them. You got your sub, so you will send your vocal 
folder to the vocal sub. Same thing for all the rest of them. So now, let's show how the macro, how would you do it. So how you set your macros up. Go into your keyboard shortcut. All the way down. You will see it's add macros right here under the macros. So this is where it's going to be under macros. You scroll all the way down. All right. All of these I created. And you can download my settings at layerproductions.com. All you got to do is sign up, go to the download page, and you will see it macros, traction macros, and you can download it. And this the thing that's so cool about it is even though you see the plugins I pull up, you can go change just the plugin name and you'll be able to do the same thing. Like I'm in the 64 bit version right now so I can't pull this up right now but this is the uh, Mono Channel Strip, the Mackie Mono Channel Strip that came with traction uh, two and three, so it still be it still working right off it. Sometimes, like I said, if you use too many of them, or it always seem to work. If I don't use too many different kind of plugins in my edit, if I use a bunch of Mackie plugins, it all work. But if I try to use Mackie plugins and a bunch of different plugins, it'll crash on you. But they still work good. All right, so what you do, you will just come. If you got, once you get this, you download it, you'll go and you'll see the macros already got. Now, like I say, this for the plugins you don't have, you'll just come right here. Where it say traction insert plugin track. This is the plugin. So what you would do, you would just go to your plugins folder, copy the name. You'll copy the name in your plugins folder, and once you copy the name, you'll paste it here, paste it right here, and then it's gonna pull that plugin up, and not the plugins that it pull up for me. So you can do the same thing. Like I got this micro insert four tracks, insert eight tracks, insert four tracks with EQ, insert eight tracks with EQ. You can just change the EQ. See, I got that I, I EQ Pro right here all you would do copy and paste the EQ paste it right there or whatever you want to change this you can make this be insert full reverb tracks you could just rename it here rename it whatever you done and the same thing the plugin that you just want you just put it right here and it will do it but this, this is gonna make it be a template for you to get started if you don't have macros I know it's a lot of people out there that's way more advanced than me with this. Like, I'm not advanced with this. I just picked up on it. And some days I just spend time just building projects. And that's what I be doing. So I just got into it and I made my macro and I built my macros up. And I'm going to make some more and hopefully I add them to the site. That's what I be doing. So you can just go do the same thing with all of them. Like how I set up my kick and snare sub. You'll go in here. And what you want to remember, like if you change this, if you want to change this or copy it, like because if you want to go add a new micro, you could just say, this is the great thing about it too, right? You can say add new micro, right? But then when you go here, you right click. You can go to use a macro, so you can pick one of the macros already got. You can say, all right, I want to replicate the key and sip sub, but you might want to call this something else. See, it's already untitled, so you're going to be able to call this something else. Give it your own key. You put the key in right here, plus hit the key that you want to work to make the macro work. You can use combinations, control, alt, shift, hold them buttons, or this, alt, shift, control, even one of them, and 
different keys on the keyboard. Right. So what you could do if you see right here, it say set track name traction, set track name right here. This is how you set the name. So if you wanted to call it something else, whatever you wanted to call this track that you calling up, this is where you do it at, right here. You would go right here, change the name, whatever you want to call it. This way you would put that name at. So when you call the track up, it already had the name on it. You'll put that right there. And this is where you insert your plugin. And remember that the plugin closest to the top will be the last plugin. The first plugin gonna be the last plugin. Always remember that. So you you're putting them in order backwards. That's why the limit is at the top because it's the last plugin. But just remember when you're ready to set your plugin chain up, then you could just come in here and just change whatever you want to change by just changing the name. These are the plugins. All the ones that say traction, insert plugin track. That's a plugin. So you could just change each one. Then go into like the beat track. Okay. Eight beat track. So you will see right here, this has this is where it's determining how many tracks you're putting in. Right here with this number with the eight at. You can change this to as many as you want. You can change that as many as you want. However many tracks you want to do. And right here, the same thing. Call it what you want. You can call this what you want. Right here. That's what my EQ ain't been coming in. Remember, to make the message say what you wanted to say, it's right here. When you see this, that's a traction, show message above property. And every one of these folder mixes, everything from the kick and snare is sure to have a message on it. So when you want to change it, if you want to see the message come up, remember, I would just go change it anyway because if you don't go change it and say you, you change this and call it something else, and you change the number of racks, I mean, the number of tracks right here, and you didn't change that, it's going to give you a message saying that you added eight beat tracks, but you might have added eight vocal tracks. You know what I mean? So you'll want to definitely go change this to whatever you change your micro to, your macro to. So... That's pretty much it though, man. Then you get something. Somebody figure out better ways to do it or you get a better setup than mine, let me know. You know what I mean? Get in the comment box, subscribe, hit me up. Obey who say. Thanks for watching.